Hi there, welcome to this week's story time. I'm Liana and I am here with the Ada Community Libraries. And this week we are going to start our story time with a song. It might be familiar to you. Usually it's a song about a little guy named Tiny Tim, but this song is about someone named Tiny Ted. So I'm gonna sing it twice so that you can get the hang of who Tiny Ted is. And then the second time you can sing along. All right. I had a little tortoise. His name was Tiny Ted. I put him in my sandbox to see if he would dig. He ate up all my shovels, he ate up all my toys, and now his tummy's rumbling, my sandbox he's destroyed. Did you notice the difference between this little guy and Tiny Tim, who you may have heard of? Yeah? Tiny Tim is usually a song about a turtle. And my friend here, Tiny Ted is a tortoise. Different animals, although they look pretty similar. So let's sing it again. I have a little tortoise. His name is Tiny Ted. I put him in my sandbox to see if he would dig. He ate up all my shovels, he ate up all my toys, and now his tummy's rumbling, my sandbox he's destroyed. Yay! Not for the sandbox. That's destroyed. And not for his little tummy either. But he is a cute little thing, isn't he? So, our first story today called who Wants a Tortoise by Dave Keen and illustrated by K.G. Campbell. Uh, it is published by Alfred A. Knopf and read with permission from them, so thank you. This is about someone who at first doesn't think our little friend is all that cute. So we'll see if she changes her mind. So. Who wants a tortoise? I have been waiting my whole life to get a puppy, a rascally guy with a waggly tail. I make lists of cute dog names. I read about training puppies. <clears throat> I dream of all the adventures I'll have with my trusty dog at my side. A puppy is the only thing I want for my birthday, but the present with the holes in the top doesn't have a puppy in it. What's that? whispers Sasha. She has a golden retriever. Is it dead? asks Emily. She has a Dalmatian. It's a tortoise, says Eric who's an expert on gross stuff. That's a reptile. It has cold blood. He has a wiener dog. A tortoise, I croak. Who wants a tortoise? I don't cry until I open Sasha's present. That's a leash. After everyone leaves, Daddy says he's told me a million times that he's allergic to dogs. Did you ever think I might be allergic to a dumb tortoise? I shout. You never get timeouts because of a dog. That's what happens when you shout at your dad, you get a timeout. I don't have a list of cute tortoise names, so I don't name him anything. Hey you, tortoise. He doesn't seem to mind but it's impossible to tell what a tortoise is thinking. I decide to see what my new lump of a pet can do. Fetch boy, fetch. It turns out tortoises won't fetch anything. The 
They also do not like rolling over. But when it comes to playing dead, my tortoise is an expert. And unlike dogs, tortoises will not lick your face or beg for bologna. And they do not get excited when you come through the door. Look at that. No sloppy kisses. Not interested in treats. And he is not excited that she has come home. At least my tortoise doesn't squirm when you play makeover. I do his nails with sparkling raspberry delight. You shouldn't use a glue stick on such a majestic creature. But he looks like a princess. Mommy and I both make our mad faces for the rest of the day. I think my tortoise is mad too, but it's impossible to tell what he's thinking. Grammy and Grandpa come for a visit and bring me a birthday present, a tortoise book. My book says tortoises like mine were the first reptile to go into space. So I make my tortoise a spacesuit. He actually looks kind of brave. See that? Tortoises have been around since the dinosaurs. Wow, that's even older than you. And there's the tortoise. He's dressed up like a like an astronaut, but I think he kind of looks like a baked potato. If a tortoise can fly into space, then going for a walk should be easy. But there's no place for the leash, but it's nothing a little duct tape can't fix. So she got to use that leash anyway. It turns out tortoises are actually pretty good at some things. When Sasha and I have a lemonade stand, we also sell chances to hold a real life tortoise and we sell more tortoise than lemonade. Eric and I set up a racetrack. My guy wins by a landslide. On sharing day at school, my tortoise poops on Brendan's desk, which is totally great. Dumb turtle, he says. How dare you, I say. Tortoises hate being called turtles. Besides, everyone knows turtles live in water and tortoises live on land. They do, he says. I discover there's one thing tortoises are too good at, hide and seek. After 20 minutes, we start to panic. How can a tortoise run away? He may be slow, but he's very steady. Here, tortoise, 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 we shout a billion times, but a tortoise almost never comes when you call. We knock on everyone's door. He looks like a rock, but with long, sparkly pink toenails. Uh-oh. We hang 50 signs and offer our lemonade money for a reward. Maybe he dug underground to hibernate till next spring. What is he thinking? He'll miss Christmas and everything. When it gets dark, I set out a place of butter lettuce, which is like chocolate chip cookies to a tortoise. And I leave the porch light on just in case. Days go by. I put fresh butter lettuce out every night. I can't sleep with my poor little tortoise out in the big world all by himself with only his shell to protect him. He never made any noise, but the whole house seems quieter without him. A week later, mommy happens to mention that Mrs. Gilbert down the street thinks a rabbit is nibbling her turnips and cabbages. I'm out the door so fast I forget to swallow my spaghetti. You naughty little tortoise, I shout. Don't worry, I tell Mrs. Gilbert. This rascally guy with the waggly tail belongs to me. Somebody is extra shy about all the attention at his welcome home parade. Look at that. They're pulling him on a box with his little leash. Woohoo, he's back home. Welcome home, tortoise. We celebrate by painting our toenails sparkling raspberry delight. That night, after we settle down in our beds, the whole house feels quiet, but this time it's a tortoise kind of quiet. Just before I fall asleep, I remember my favorite name on the list of cute dog names. It's perfect. Good night, Rover, I say into the darkness. 
Then I dream of all the adventures I'll have with my trusty tortoise at my side. Wasn't that a nice story? She didn't really want a tortoise at first, but definitely grew to like the idea of it. And I'm glad that she has Rover. So our next book is also about a tortoise. This tortoise is named Truman. Truman was written by Jean Reedy and illustrated by Lucy Ruth Cummins. And it is published by Athenium Books. So thank you for permission to read this. And this book, instead of focusing a lot on how, um, how the girl feels about her tortoise, this is a lot more about how the tortoise feels. So let's see how this is different. Truman. Truman was small, the size of a donut, a small donut, and every bit as sweet. He lived with his Sarah, high above honking taxis and growling trash trucks and shrieking cars and the number 11 bus which traveled south. Truman never honked or growled or shrieked at anything or anybody. He was peaceful and pensive, just like his Sarah. There's Sarah, and there's Truman. One day, Sarah ate a big banana with her breakfast, clipped a blue bow in her hair, and buttoned up a brand new sweater. She strapped on a backpack so big, 32 small tortoises could ride along in it. But zero tortoises did. Sarah placed seven green beans in Truman's dish. Two more than usual. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She kissed her finger and touched it to his shell and whispered, be brave. Then she left. Not to worry, she'd left before and she'd always returned. But this time that backpack was particularly big and Sarah looked particularly pensive and that banana and that bow. And let's not forget about those extra beans. Hmm, Truman looks worried. That's when Truman saw something he'd never seen before. Sarah boarding the number 11 bus going south. The bus roared away. Truman waited for Sarah to return. He waited and waited. He waited a thousand hours, tortoise hours, that is, until he could wait no longer. He would go after his Sarah. He would catch the number 11 South, even amid the honking and the growling and the shrieking, even if that seemed impossible. Bonk. Look, he's stuck in his little cage. That's when he noticed the rocks, three rocks that had always been there. Ordinary rocks that until now seemed extraordinary. One, two, three, and out. And the arm of the couch and the pillow propped just right and that tall, tall boot and the rug, that glorious, look at his path all the way up the rocks down the couch, over the pillow, down the tall boot, and over to the rug. That glorious, endless rug. Without Sarah, their home seemed vast and uncharted and unsettling. Look at that, there's Truman and this big, big, endless rug. Truly unsettling. 
Look how big and scary all those toys look. But perhaps the most unsettling was that Truman could no longer see the taxis or the trash trucks or the cars or the number 11 bus. Which way was south anyway? Now the sun hung low like Truman's head and heart. But just then, And then, vroom, screech, whoosh. Up floors and under doors, Truman heard it. A bus. It was time, time to catch the number 11 South. Amid the honking, the growling and the shrieking, yet standing there in that ray of light, Truman felt peaceful and pensive and brave. And he's got his dandelion that he found on the rug. But just as he was about to slip under that door, through that opening, barely the size of a small tortoise. Look at that. Looks like someone's at the door. Sarah! She spotted him, shining like the sun. Truman, she cried. She scooped him up and said things like, oh my goodness, and you, and how did you ever, and Amazing. Sarah kissed her finger and touched it to his shell and tucked him back safely in his tank where he was peaceful and pensive and proud. And later, just before bedtime, she read him a story. It's titled Truman and there's a picture of the number 11 bus. Now Truman knew that one day soon, he and his Sarah might travel south to see new sights and hear new sounds and think new thoughts. Look at that, she's at show and tell with Truman. He got to go to school together. Wasn't that nice? Truman seems like he's smaller than Rover. And that is an interesting difference because tortoises are usually big or big-ish and turtles are often smaller. Two friends that look pretty similar. They both have shells. They both have four legs. They both have a little tail but they are pretty different. Like we learned in Who Wants a Tortoise, turtles often live in water and tortoises usually live on land. And tortoises are usually bigger than turtles. And they also have big clunky feet and arms to help them because they're so big and heavy. Whereas little turtles have little webs on their feet. That means they've got little things in between their little fingers that helps them swim. And now that we know the difference between our friend, the tortoise, and this little guy, the turtle, we have one more story. And that story is called Turtle's Penguin Day by Valerie Gorbachev. And it is published by Alfred A. Knopf, so thank you for permission to read this one. And we're gonna try to have this little guy help us with our story. So, Turtle's Penguin Day. All right. One night, Father Turtle read Little Turtle a story about penguins. When Little Turtle fell asleep, he dreamed he was a penguin. 
He played on the ice and dove into the waves and swam and splashed with the other penguins. In the morning, Little Turtle decided he wanted to be a penguin. He put on his red slippers and waddled from side to side. After breakfast, Little Turtle had an idea. He went up to the attic and found his grandfather's black jacket in an old chest and put it on. Now I look like a real penguin, said Little Turtle, staring at himself in the mirror. Hurry up, honey, said Mother Turtle, or you'll be late for school. I'm ready, said Little Turtle. You can't go to school in that funny costume, said Mother Turtle. It's not a funny costume, said Little Turtle. I'm a penguin. And then he put the book about penguins in his backpack and waddled outside to the school bus. Turtle called the kids on the school bus. Great costume. Thank you, said Little Turtle. I'm a penguin from the South Pole. Miss Dog, look, cried the children when they got to school. We have a penguin in our class. Oh my, said Miss Dog. Why do you look like a penguin today, Little Turtle? Look at all the little animals. Let's see, there's a raccoon, two frogs, I see a rabbit, a beaver, our friend Little Turtle dressed up as a penguin, a mouse, a skunk, and I bet that's a fox, and then of course, Miss Dog. Because Daddy read me this book about penguins last night, said Little Turtle. I love penguins. I love waddling from side to side like penguins do. I love sliding on my belly like penguins do. I even love to sleep standing up like penguins do, said Little Turtle. We want to be penguins too, cried all the children. So while Miss Dog read to them from the penguin book, they all tried to pass balls to each other, just using their feet, the way penguins do with their eggs. And when they had recess, Little Turtle and his friends slid down the slide on their bellies, pretending they were penguins, sliding on the ice. During music time, they all danced a waddling penguin dance. Waddle, waddle, waddle. And at nap time, all of them dreamed penguin dreams. Look at all those penguins. How was school today? asked Mother Turtle when Little Turtle came home. We had a penguin day, said Little Turtle. It was great. That night, Little Turtle ate fish-shaped crackers with dinner because penguins love fish. And before he went to sleep, Little Turtle brushed his penguin beak. Even when Little Turtle got into bed, he still pretended to be diving and swimming with his penguin friends. Then Father Turtle brought a new bedtime story to read. This is the story of a little monkey who lives in a beautiful jungle, he said. Really? said Little Turtle. A monkey? And when Little Turtle fell asleep that night, he dreamed he was a funny little monkey. Look at all of them swinging on the branches. 
See, and there's him the next day, dressed up as a little monkey, reading his monkey book. He's tired of penguins. Thank you for watching this week's story time. I'm glad we got to meet our friends, the tortoise. little turtle and just for a little bit our friend the penguin so thanks for tuning in and be sure to watch our video next week thank you